Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Elizabeth Kalmazol, and I'm the community manager at iTrain. So thank you all for joining today's iTrain IR 4.0 webinar course preview sessions on data science and Internet of Things. So a quick reminder before the start of the presentation, please make sure that your microphones are muted during uh, the webinar because we don't want to hear some background noises and things like that. So not to disturb the presenters. And if you have any questions for the speakers, you can write them in the question box, in the chat box that is on the right hand side of the screen. And uh, yeah, so all the questions will be answered after the presentations during the Q&A session. So we will have a presentation for data science and after the data science presentation, we'll look through all the questions that have been sent through in. And the, within time limits, the presenters will make sure to answer all of them. So uh, yeah, during the presentation, please do not choose the option to present now. And uh, yeah, so I will briefly start about uh, what is iTrain and uh, yeah, and the agenda for today. So at, uh, after shortly, after my presentation of iTrain, will be followed by a presentation on data science by Dr. Nicholas and Dr. Alvin. And at 10.45, uh, hopefully we'll have the Q&A session. And at 11, we'll have an Internet of Things presentation by Wen Jin, which is also going to be followed by the Q&A session. So what is iTrain? iTrain is supporting the digital transformation uh, within Asia. We're the pioneers and leaders in tech learning. And at iTrain, we believe in two core principles, the power of technology to shape the future and help us build a better world and that love of learning is the source of human ingenuity and well-being. All our courses, most of our courses, are HRDF claimable. And uh, so, yeah, we're backed by government and academia, and our goal is to fast-track Asian businesses with the latest technology applications and know-how. So uh, the courses that we are providing at iTrain are on the fields of artificial intelligence, digital marketing, data science, Industry 4.0, mobile app development, fintech, cybersecurity, blockchain, etc. So these are these have been some of our clients that we have had the chance to empower their employees. And as you can see, they're across many different kind of strategic sectors, either in finance, technology, industry, and manufacturing. So the future is digital and from creative arts to business to fundamental sciences, the future of every field has been revolutionized by the digital industry. And at iTrain, we know that for people to unlock this endless potential, we need to give them uh, the keys, which is digital fluency. So today you will learn more about how data science and how Internet of Things can help you unlock this potential. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me. And now I will give the floor to Nicholas and Alvin to present on data science. Nicholas, the floor is yours. Nicholas, please unmute yourself. Hello. Hi, yes, we can hear you. Good morning. So, uh, wait, let me set up my presentation. Wait, yeah. Right. 
So can you see my presentation? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that. Okay. okay, good morning everyone. Thank you very much for ITRAIN giving this opportunity. So um, my name is Dr. Nicholas. Okay, currently I'm serving as a lecturer at University Tunghusin on Malaysia. I teach programming and also I get certified for data science analyst and engineer by Fusionet International. And I'm also co-author with Dr. Elvin on the books titled Programming for Beginners with Python. So basically, how do we, we use data science in my project? I use the data science in my project for leakage detection, more to engineering works. And also I work with uh, Ministry of Higher Education to predict, to do the sum prediction modeling on the student capability uh, acceptance rate to the university based on their course. I will, later I will uh, describe, okay, what the projects that we uh, currently do with JPT. And also I do sentiment analysis for user perception in market analysis. Okay, so basically the training fields that I do is for data science with visual programming. Okay, later I will discuss more about what is visual programming about. Okay, so we do also the machine learning with Lime, Python, and also Python 3. Yeah? All right, so let us brief. I would like to brief about the world of data. So due to the advancement of the technology, we found that the data keep growing from day to day. Okay, we know that even from the social media sites, for example, Facebook, every second people will uh, People will post uh, their message, okay, and that data can be in the form of text, video, and also images, okay. So this tremendous amount of data has been utilized by most of organization from role, and they turn it into a value, okay. So um, so this data come from multiple resources, as I mentioned before, they come from a social media site. Some of them come from a website, okay, and even in the company itself, they have their own data center, okay, to pull out our data from the internet. For example, if they have a good big data facility, so this can pull a lot of data. Eh? So from online transaction, we can see that almost every minute, there are a lot number of online transaction they make, okay. So, and one of the things is also the internet of things, okay? Things are connected, right? So this produce a lot of log data that can be analyzed, can be transformed into a valuable information, okay? And the social media itself, right? So we can see here in every minute statistic in 2019, okay? About 1 million videos being posted, okay? For every minute in the day, yeah? The average video posted, and we can see that the Twitters, eh? okay, we can see about 500,000 tweets been made for a minute, right? And about 18 million, eh? 188 million okay, email are sent in every minute. So this amount of data is keep growing day by day. So I'm not sure in 2020, it can be double from what we have seen now, okay? So what is the data science? So it is study, okay, it's the field to study about this data. So they include multiple domain of knowledge, including the mathematics and statistics, computer programming, the analytic skills, visualization, and business communication. So there are four spectrum in data science, okay, when you want to deal with data, so they always involve with this four spectrum. And the first is the descriptive analytics, okay? And the descriptive analytics, we always ask about what happened. What happened to my business, okay? What happened to our sales this month? So who are our customer, okay? The customer is come from which about a range of age, right? Who are there more female or more males? Okay, and then how many people buy item E? So it can tell about the popularity of the item. So basically this initiate the question, 
okay, and we will uh, study more on this uh, by including all the statistical measure, okay, the exploratory analysis in this descriptive analytics. Okay, after we done that, then we go for diagnostic. Okay, so we might need to study. We go deeper. Okay, by asking why does it happen, what caused the cell to drop. So this kind of question asking us, okay, to get more deeper on the insights value into the data. And then we also need to have a predictive analytics. Okay, so it tell us what might happen in the future. Okay, what the trend would be, okay, if my sales, if I increase my, if I increase my uh, budget, uh, marketing budget, all right? So these are kind of questions that can be raised. And the last one will be the prescriptive analytics, okay? So it more to the decision making, okay? For example, it involves the top management in the company, okay? The strategies, okay? So how to make this happen, okay? So, for example, um, if there is a problem, so how how to make sure that it can be solved? What the possible solution that can be made to that particular problem? Okay. So, for example, another one is what is the perfect value of discount for product A to increase its sales while retaining a high profit? Okay. So these are the advantages. Okay. From that spectrum, okay, we can see that the goal is to make the profit more, okay, to maximize the profit, okay, by applying the right strategy and approach that can minimize the loss and maximize the profit. Second is to create new innovation, okay, to, we see that more people, more organization utilize the data, okay, and from that data, they innovate new products, a new service, for example, the Grab car, okay, the Grab car utilize the data, okay, of the people, okay, uh, the data of the current traffic situation, so they turn that into a value that deliver the message to the uh, user, okay, so the Google Map, for example, right, and also to improve the services, okay, so the goal is to increase the customer satisfaction and experience, Later, we will see how this data site can help some organization to improve their service, to make their customer more happy, right? And help to make a fast and better decision, okay? So data science give us the insights, give us the information, so we can utilize these tools to analyze this information more faster and more accurate. So we take a look into uh, Amazon, okay, what actually is done by the Amazon. I think all of us are familiar with this company, okay. So they use what we call as a recommendation-based system, okay, to predict the customer needs and behavior. So there might be, okay, the accuracy of the model, okay, in 2011, if not mistake, okay. So they managed to, they are group peoples okay they do that can improve the uh the the way they make a business okay by using a recommendation system so this used to predict the rating and preference to user by use and by using the item okay for example if let's say i purchase these books okay i think uh, i purchase this book or maybe i viewing this book in Side, okay so they might okay they also suggest me to buy all these books okay maybe i'm not buying the first book but they give me the recommendation okay the almost similar or with uh, almost similar uh, value almost similar okay title related for the first books so about 30 percent of the revenue generated okay the sales is through a recommendation engine right so we also can take a look into a netflix so about 80 percent of the movie watches are based on also the recommendation system and we know that this recommendation system are driven by ai or machine learning okay machine learning is a part of ai that give us that help us to predict okay the future event for example in this case the recommendation predict the future behavior of the user right 
So for example, if I watch this movie previously, so at the end they will suggest me, okay, okay there is a high possibility that I would like this movie to be watched later. And also we take a look into a GPS system, okay. So this is very interesting technology. It's a very simple, but we can see the impact, how they can utilize the data, the data science into the innovation of the products. For example, okay, this is traditional. I think maybe 20 years ago, we are using a manual map, okay? So we read it, we bring a paper map, okay? Then we find the location and it's very difficult, okay? And when the growth of the digital technology, okay, we have the knowledge in programming, we have a microprocessor that can that can make the device can be whole, okay, can be mobile, so they create the, the GPS, okay, the device GPS is uh, the GPS device, all right. By the way, okay, we can only know the information, okay, how to get there. Okay, we don't know the information about the traffic. So the data science, okay, the AI, the presence of the AI, okay, the machine learning, okay, transform the way we see the maps. Okay, the maps, for example, the Google Maps give us more information, the traffic condition. If the AI itself, okay, give us recommendation, which route should we take, okay, to get more faster, okay, give even give us the ETA, okay. The arrival time of uh, the the ETA, yeah? the estimation time of arrival to the place. Yeah? So these are very uh, informative. Okay, this is how they can use the data science for their innovation. Okay, and also in the Grab car. Okay, so Grab car. Okay, they app. Okay, they change the way people uh, text uh, public transport. Okay. For example, previously we have taxi, but nowadays we just use the app and it helps people not only to increase this customer service and it helps others to, for uh, for example, job, uh, job making opportunities. Eh? So this is very interesting way. So they can save almost 80% of waiting and searching time. Okay, if they want to use the, uh, public transport, yeah? right? <clears throat> so who are the ones that deal with this? So they are called as a data scientist, okay? It is a profession who works with data in relevant fields, okay, domain industry. For example, in finance, okay, data scientists that working with the data related with the financial, okay? For example, and for in manufacturing, they can be data scientists deal with the manufacturing data so they help to improvise and optimize the system okay the system how to get more production okay reduce the waste so these are kind of an uh, example of the domain eh? so and also they are the analytical expert with analytical thinking with a technical skill that they can use to solve the problem eh? So it also with the mind of curiosity to explore more what problem need to be solved. Okay, so how we can solve it. Okay, uh, they can identify the problem by analyzing the data. Okay, the irregularity of the data. Okay, give some insight that help them to identify the problem and may offer some solution. Okay, so are you interested to be part of the data science team? It may not be easy. So let's take a look. Okay, what might be the challenges? Eh? Okay, so we know that the demand set, eh, the needs and the demand of data science, okay, keep increasing from day to day. Okay, this is because people utilize their data. Okay, so the data is keep growing. Okay, so for example, in finance, 59% eh, of finance and accounting professional say that 21% is by 2020, okay, they will be required in the industry. So it transforms the way accountant works. Okay, from a traditional accountant, they need to have, they need to upskill into a data scientist, the data analyst for the financial field. Okay, okay, and one of the main challenges, okay, experienced by the professionals, by the individual, by the seniors, eh, 
is to learn of writing a programming code. Okay, for example, if you want to do the machine learning, okay, predictive analytics, so we need to write a program. Okay, and it's not easy for someone who has no or little programming knowledge and experience, right? And what we offer here, okay, we have a innovative data science module. Eh? So we are using a visual programming approach, right? So all these data science we is a complete course, okay, including from machine learning, data analytics, mathematics, and visual programming, okay? So in our course, we don't use a coding, okay? No coding required. Okay, we use an open source, okay, very powerful open source, NIME analytic platform software to develop a machine learning algorithm. And the third is we use the advanced Microsoft Power BI. Okay, this will be uh, explained further by Dr. Elvin okay, for data analytics and visualization. So what is, I would like to talk on machine learning and visual programming. Yeah? So this example of the differences between the conventional coding and also visual programming. So you can see that okay, it is more interactive if we can make okay, a visual programming. Okay, it's more easy to understand. Okay, less works on writing the program. Okay, because if we start our journey in data science, sometimes people invest a lot of time to learn programming. But the core value of data science is to extract the information, okay, as much as we can, as accurate as we can. So no matter what the tools that we use, as long as we can extract the exact information, okay, so it can deliver a good understanding on the data and the accuracy of the data, right? So why we use a visual programming? So we only apply drag and drop approach. There will be no coding required to convert uh, to do this visual programming okay so as i said before no need to write a code okay using any specific programming language for nowadays there is one very popular language that we use even we also use that okay actually some of my works i use uh, python eh? python programming okay even we teach python right so let me so even we make uh, books on the python here Right, so we use this okay to write the programming code there, yeah? okay, and it also by using a visual programming it will less of error and fast executing for the algorithm. So we have a lot of times we can spend more time on making the program, making the algorithm more better. Yeah? So if we are using a traditional programming for someone that very new, okay. They will spend a lot of time to learn the programming itself, okay? But very less time will be on the uh, how to make the model become more better. More better. Right. So what are the tools that we use? We call it a NIME analytic platform, okay? It is an open source visual programming tool, okay? Codeless approach of performing programming tasks, okay? So basically we use it in data analytics, manip manipulation and visualization and also the reporting. However, okay, for the reporting, we prefer to use the Microsoft Power BI. So these are example of machine learning workflow that we conduct using uh, NIME analytics. Okay, so for example, we can see this is we we do using a logistic regression, okay, logistic regression model uh, algorithm to train the model to predict. Okay, to predict in this case, we predict the churn. Okay, the churn uh, status of the new coming user, right? And also this one is also, uh, we use a K nearest neighbor, okay? Another algorithm that can be also used as part of the classification problem. Okay, so this is our module, okay? Our main intention is, okay, in our programming course, our main intention is to help our trainer, a trainee to understand the concept and workflow of field and data science. So by applying this, by uh, joining this course, they're also able to apply the mathematics and statistic principle for the data science in data exploration, okay? So they also can perform a data preparation on the real data set. 
okay and also they get the knowledge how to use NIME and also Microsoft Power BI for predictive modeling and business intelligence so the day one basically we focusing on the NIME visual programming day two is mathematics and statistics for exploratory data analysis okay and the third one is machine learning okay machine learning we are using a NIME to perform all this machine learning workflow and the last one is business intelligence by using the Microsoft Power BI. Okay, this is example uh, the detail. Okay, in our course outline, right? I'm not going to all this one by one. Okay. Okay, so I would like to share some example, some projects that we already done with uh, Ministry of Higher Education before. Okay, we want to build the first is we want to build a prediction model. Okay, to predict the student placement rate at certain rates to their selection academic program offered by the Higher Learning Institute after their SPM. So basically the traditional approach, okay, the model that we have, okay, the students okay, log in into the system and they will see what are the programs that they can uh, apply for okay, based on their previous uh, whether they are science side or the literature okay so they see what the program that they are eligible to apply so after they do the application then they need to wait for the result okay so what is lack okay there is a lack of information we give to the students for example they don't have any ideas the chances of their being accepted or selected program of course in their SPM result they have, they may, okay, they may um, fulfill the minimum requirement. By the way, some institutions, even they offer the same course, the same academic program. By the way, they are, they may have some, uh, what do we call it, uh, some restriction, okay, because, for example, the number of intake they took every year is different compared to other university okay so these are the variables that we need to consider to give uh, to, uh, that they, they need to know okay they need to know before they can apply okay so that is there is no statistics of the acceptance so what we can do okay so we apply the machine learning approach so this is the what we call the in general this is in general i couldn't uh, send uh, give information more on this okay because there is another detailed algorithm that we apply to the system right so these are basically the variables okay some of the variables that we use to predict okay the student's acceptance rate okay so okay this is the overall algorithm okay in general also we train about okay this is a small portion small samples that we took Okay, 98,000. There is a batch. We do it batch by batch. Okay, so to ensure that we achieve the performance that we targeted for, right? So these are example of visual programming tools. Okay, so these tools. Okay, there is another tools for the visual programming. We call it a rapid miner. So this is a rapid miner. So it's similar to the NIME, but the differences is we need to pay for the rapid miner. So in terms of performance, in terms of usability, I think both are similar. Okay. So NIME analytics give more advantage because it's open source, okay, and it's free to use. Okay. There is no restriction, okay, uh, for the NIME number of data, number of rows. So there is no restriction on that. Okay. So for example, this is the final goal, a final uh, result that we attained. Okay. We found that our our, sorry, I use the Bahasa Melayu here, okay, because some of the report that we use in Bahasa Melayu, okay, in Malay language, okay, so the accuracy of our model is achieved 77%. So it depends, okay, how good is it for us, this is considered acceptance, okay, we can accept this accuracy, right, and then we also need to interpret what it means by the class precision, okay, there is a uh, Okay, there is okay. We can see it's quite balanced here. Means that when the students predicted to be accepted, so there is seventy-seven percent that the student will be accepted. Okay, 
Okay, but when the students predicted not accepted, it's about 76%. So the difference is not that big. So we can accept this model. Okay. So actually there are a few runs. So this is the second run. Okay. We found this is the optimum, uh, optimum result that we can obtain. Eh? Okay, so this example, okay, we can see that when do the, when we compare, when we measure the performance using the test set, test data set, okay, we can see that this is the actual status, okay, accepted, and we can see the predicted, okay, also been accepted. But of course, in some cases, so we take a look, okay, for example, this thing, okay, so this might be the error in prediction, okay. So that's why these uh, things that cause the uh, uh, affect the accuracy of the model, okay. So we use the statistic probability here, okay. So for example, if accepted and predicted accepted about seventy one percent, okay, it will be predicted accepted. So that's why the model will predict to be accepted. So these are the, at the end, we need to translate that information. Okay, we cannot give the raw information. Okay, we need to translate it into a norm, into a, what do we call as, a, into a more readable message. Okay, so uh, so we can, instead of giving just uh, the, okay, just to apply, but now we can come up with the, Acceptance rate, okay, how many percent if they want to apply for civil engineering in UTM, okay, of course, there will be no 100% to be accepted because the other variable can affect that uh, result, okay. So we also use to analyze the churn, okay, so this is uh, by a tele data by the telecommunication company. So from this a lot amount of data, we use the machine learning to predict the churn probability of new customer, okay? What are the characteristics of that customer? So we use a NIMI here. So for example, this is the total, the overall workflow, okay? So we use a decision tree, okay? Decision tree algorithm to train the model, okay? And then to predict the churn analysis, okay? So we found that the accuracy is up to 93%. By the way, when we go to the class recall, a class position here, so there is a, lot, a little bit different here. So we need to do something, okay? We need to do something uh, by adjusting some the configuration of the parameters, okay, to make sure this is almost balanced, okay? And we also do the customer segmentation, okay? How do, for example, we have this uh, cluster data, okay? We need to do the clustering model. Okay, to identify where is our customer, okay, to segment our customer, right? For example, the cluster one is a group that are satisfied with the shopping experience and loyal with the product. And zero may be a customer that are not happy, but they still love the ring, okay? So the customer two, okay? that is satisfied with the shopping, but they are not loyal to the products. So the last one is the group that are not satisfied and not loyal. So we need to know, okay, this is way we apply the prescriptive analytics. So we need to provide a strategic action and communication, okay? How can we turn the customer, how we can improve the satisfaction index of the customer zero, okay? And how to retain the customer one, Okay, so that they still satisfy, okay, they love our products, okay. And in cluster three, okay, we can offer a membership program, for example, to improve their loyalty, okay. So we offer this loyalty program, okay, providing a discount offer. So these are strategy and strategic communication that we can use. All right, so I pass to Dr. Elvin, okay. Dr. Elvin, maybe this is your time, yeah. Later, I will continue again. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hello. Uh, morning. Hold on a minute. Let me.
screen. Can you see my slides? No, not that we can see your folder. Okay, hold on. Uh, okay, is that okay? Okay. Okay. So, good morning. Uh, okay. Morning. Uh, following from Nicholas' presentation, okay, I would like to talk a little bit about business intelligence and how we use it using Power BI. Okay. Let me introduce myself. I am Alvin. Um, I'm also a lecturer in University Tun Hussein, Hussein on Malaysia. And my training fields will be more to business intelligence using Power BI. I'm also uh, known uh, for programming okay, uh, with using Python 3. Uh, some of the data science project that I'm involved with is um, using analytics dashboard for the Ministry of Education um, using Power BI. It's okay, so I'll, I'm also involved in uh, producing dashboards for our faculties uh, on some of the objective-based education reports in, in our faculty. So first, I would like to tell you what is business intelligence, okay? So business intelligence is the process, okay? So process of getting data, okay, and delivering reliable and relevant information so to take this information and give it to the right people at the right time and with the goal to achieve better decisions faster. So what does it do? So it focuses primarily on analysis and reporting on past historical data. So we take past historical data and we quantify its observations. So we take it and we quantify it. And lastly, we examine to measure the uh, insights. Okay, we analyze it, and most important is to make data-driven decisions. Okay, so we need to make decisions according to the past historical data. Uh, business intelligence is used more in performance management, in descriptive analytics, and also in data mining. And here we can see there's a difference between business intelligence and business analytics. So BI, okay, we call it BI, is business intelligence. It is um, pro reactive where it focuses on data from the past and present data. Okay, it provides understanding of past performance and it uses in decision making. Okay, for business analytics, it is proactive. It focuses on the future. It is used to predict trends and to discover patterns. So BI is the monitoring and tracking of metrics and data to help improve business decisions. So it is related by uh, it is stated by where BA is used the data to predict trends and potential outcomes. So why business intelligence is needed? Okay, uh, it, it's needed because it improves the organization's competitive positioning. It examines competitors, uh, shows data trends, the seasonality, and quickly identify issues for best practices. One of the significant advantages, significant advantages when um, making strategic decisions. Uh, this enable organizations to have any time access to organized data. Um, organizations or companies can identify inefficient business process and hidden patterns, and also identify areas of strength and weakness, and also discover new opportunities that can occur during your business uh, Activities. So who benefits? Companies that made use of BI, for example, we can see Google, supermarkets like Target, Netflix, and also Facebook. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, we take a look at uh, a supermarket or a retail store, for example, uh, such as Aeon or uh, Tesco or other things. Okay, so all the time when you go to uh, certain supermarkets, if, if for instance, Aeon, they give you membership cards, okay, membership cards uh, or loyalty cards. Okay, so this uh, gives you the, uh, okay, uh, this gives you opportunity 
to either shop online and uh, when you shop online you give uh, your data to them okay you have your username your password so when you swipe your card at the cashier uh, the card associates everything to the customers buy in and in store and online okay because it has a unique account number this uh, data is stored in the organization's database. So the organization or the company has the opportunity to, to store this massive amount of customer information, okay? And the organization have the ability to run analytical reports, which can en enable to show how loyal the customers are to a brand, what products customers buy and how frequently they buy it. So if the customers have the preference of visiting the store or buying from the uh, things online. Okay, so this all of inf information uh, we can access and we can access and uh, analyze it through a dashboard such as like this. Okay, so this is produced from a Power BI dashboard. Okay, so we can analyze and study the trend and patterns on how a customer or how a single branch of a supermarket could uh, sales in a day or in, in a month, okay? So from that, uh, it gives the ability to understand or even predict an individual customer or segment based on their needs, preferences, preferences, and also their habits in buying things in the store. So this gives an advantage to the store of to anticipate new opportunities to sell, deliver better services, and provide target market campaigns. So target market campaigns are where, okay, for example, if, if you go to, uh, okay, for AM, for example, when you buy some things, uh, they give you some certain gift vouchers, okay? Why? Because they have your data and they, they use it to lure you to buy more things, okay? Sometimes you get discounts on specific products, products that you often buy in the supermarket, okay? And most of the time, all of us, all of us gets this uh, announcements of sale through emails and SMS. Okay, uh, you get it uh, where you, for example, yeah, okay, you buy things, uh, certain things, they give you discounts on certain items. Okay, all of this because um, it is referred to your past behavior on your buying uh, behavior. Okay, so as a summary. The store or the company can have a benefit to increase the sales, differentiate brands by providing better unique services. Okay. Another example I can share to you is uh, for our project that we did with the Ministry of Education, okay, on uh, the enrollment system. So we get this project to study patterns of student intake or student enrollment and how it impacts the students, okay? So we can see there, we, we focus on the type of program enrolled by students, okay? What are the programs that uh, students take the most? So this can be seen as, um, okay, for example, we have the highest amount of students applying these certain courses. So if we click this course, we can able to see what universities offers them and how we predict the trend. For example, the past five years, the trend increases, and also we can forecast what is the trend in the next five to 10 years. So this will help to have a better decision where we can, if the, if the enrollment increases, what we need to do, we need to open more universities uh, to offer programs such as this, and uh, maybe to reduce uh, the intake or to have this decision, to, to produce this decision and um, able to uh, come up with certain uh, uh, problem solving techniques. Okay, so this is the example that we, I mean, the project that we've done. So, how business intelligence is presented is by creating dashboards such as this. Okay, it's important is to measure the decisions and effectiveness. So, to create this, we use Microsoft Power BI. Microsoft Power BI is a free open source software offered by Microsoft. It is free and it is easy to use. And the advantage of using this uh, is to produce visualization. Okay, stunning visual visualization reports can be can be produced where interactive data visions are shown. 
uh, it is easy to use. It can tell your data story using drag and drop canvas. Okay, so we just need to drag our data to into the graphs. Okay, and produce automatically produce figures and graphs and tables easily. So this is the tools in the Power BI software. Okay, there are a lot of tools where we can use. For example, we can install Power BI Desktop. Okay, this is the free Power BI Desktop. We can install in our computer. We can also use this Power BI services, this cloud services. And also there's a Power BI mobile app. And also there's Power BI for de developers. Okay, so we'll be focusing more to these two things, which is Power BI Desktop and is Power BI services. Okay. So for the Power BI Desktop, we can see the workflow here. Okay. The first part is for data preparation. Okay, data, data is something messy. We need to clean the data and prepare the data, which is called query editor in the Power BI desktop. Okay. After that, let's say we have a lot of data. Uh, we need to combine all of this data, which is called data modeling. Okay. And we need to have a relationship within each data that we com compile. Okay. So this is called data modeling. And lastly, when we clean the data and we compile the data, we need to do visualization. Okay, visualization is the report view, which, which is also called dashboards. So we learn. In, so we will teach you and give you a, a procedure how to use the Power BI software. So this is an interface. We teach you each inter interface and what does it do and how we can produce the visualization. For Power BI services online, we can see on how to share uh, your data, on how to publish report and dashboards, share your work for the whole company, and also we can access your work anytime and anywhere. Uh, for a course, we'll give you also practical case studies in the course. Okay, for example, loan status, uh, uh, visualization for car sales. Okay, so real life situation here, and also uh, online store sales dashboard and how we can provide data analytic thinking. Okay, so thank you very much. I'll pass the presentation back to Nicholas. So I will continue a bit more, okay. Um, Okay, so what are the skills that we gain after the completion of our course? Okay, the first you will ha have the fundam fundamental, okay, the overall concept of how to apply the mathematical and statistical concept and the theory in data analytics for the data exploration, data mining. Second, you will apply four domain analytic spectrum, okay, from descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive analytics, okay. The third one, you will have a skills to use uh, tools, okay, for a machine learning, okay, using a NIME analytic platform. And the last one, you will have a skill of using a Power BI to develop a business intelligence dashboard, okay. So the, we are using a high practical and high quality hands on, okay, for the different field, okay, for example, accounting, banking, and finance, cyber security, marketing, and sales, and also the recommended system. Okay, so the target audience, okay, we leverage our audience into a senior managers, okay, the finance, accountant, and banking professional, which is also suitable for researcher and academician, engineers, IT professionals, and students and graduates. Okay, so there are a lot of career opportunity that you can go further after you have been this kind of skill, including the data scientist, data science consultant, Okay, the machine learning engineer and BI developers, right? So one of the things, uh, there are three value proposition that we will offer for our training. Training. Okay, the first we will give them a structured curriculum for a real business application. Okay, a practical case study with a real project for specific niche industry, and the third one is to build to help the audience to build that their portfolio through a case study and our assessment. Okay, so we also provide the a la carte course, okay, a la carte course, okay, for specific for machine learning and also the business intelligence with Power BI. So that's all from our presentation. So we open for 
Q&A session. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Dr. Nicholas, and thank you, Dr. Alvin, for the presentation. So we've received uh, one question during the, in the chat box during the presentation. So the question is, is NIME or visually programming widely used locally? Okay, so for that question, is NIME or visually programming widely used locally? Yes, okay. Okay, if you go to the website, right? If you go to the website and if you follow their Twitters and also their LinkedIn, okay, there is a lot of developers, okay? For example, the nodes, yeah? They keep uh, updating the technology from days to days, okay? And even, uh, so nowadays, it getting become more popular. It's another language, okay? Another language in programming that uh, usually they use to help uh, professional who have no programming background. Okay, that is my answer for that. Mm -hmm. So widely used locally. Okay, for the time being, uh, in Malaysia maybe it's not that yet popular yet, but in some development country and even I also work with some Singaporean training center, they already start to use this software. Okay, because it is user friendly and it's very it's a free okay one of the most important it's like a python okay python is a free so this is naimi targeting for our visual program so that's my response eh? thank you very much uh, thank you for your answer the next question is what is the difference between uh, different accounting softwares versus business intelligence in the market that is provided Mm, okay, so uh, what kind of uh, what kind of accounting software is that? So BI, so BI is a tool. Okay, so it's a visualization tool actually. Um, okay, like like I seen here, there are, there are few types of visualization tools you can use, like um, uh, W or Instant BI, like you mentioned here. Someone mentioned. Um, but uh, for business intelligence, uh, Power BI is some free software uh, which anyone can use it. Okay, so yeah, I think that's the answer. <laughs> okay, thank you for your answer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, another question from Peggy Ting is that uh, uh, business intelligence tools have an amazing layout. But uh, oh, that's a suggestion from her. Uh, so from Prima. After creating your visual programming, how much more programming must be done to tweak the output? Okay, so after creating your visual programming, how much more programming? Okay, so in this case, eh, what we do basically, okay, after, for example, we, I'll show you the, some of the flow, right? Uh, So the overall of the flow, it depends on the problem also, okay? Because for example, in this case, eh, you can see in the slide, in this case, we built a machine learning model, okay, to come out with the, this, uh, to come out with, for example, we analyze the churn activity of the customer, okay? So what the things that we need to do is, if let's say the model doesn't meet the requirement, okay? So we need to do something with the data, okay? For example, the performance doesn't meet our requirement. So we need to do something, okay? We need to study more about the data, obtain the data more, or amplify, okay? There is some other methods we call a smooth algorithm, right? So that we can improvise, we can make the data more better, okay? So these are basically the things that we do. So for example, um, and also, uh, wait, yeah. Okay, so you also asked about how much more programming. So in terms of the programming, there is no coding required to do here. So that is what the things that I uh, can answer for that question, okay? Okay, that was the last question towards Dr. Nicholas and Dr. Alvin. And uh, in regards to uh, the trainings and the courses, so at the moment, we have a promotion that 
all I train courses, which are happening in May, I have a 30% discount if you sign up by 31st of March. And you can see the full list of all the courses at www.itrain.com.mi. And also you can send all your inquiries to info at itrain.com.mi. And uh, yes, I see that some more questions. Oh yes, there's one more question. Yes. Um, so for non-technical or business managers, can we pick up Python skills easily? Okay, so uh, I would like to answer the question. Actually, I just want to five it. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, for non-technical or business manager, so that's why one of the approach okay, that we introduce is using visual programming. But if they still want to learn the Python, okay, it's not that difficult. Okay, basically, the plan, the things that we plan is we use Python for data analytics. Okay. So Python for data analytics means that you learn the Python, the basic concept of the Python. Okay, it may take about one or two days, a one, two days normally, the basic concept of the Python. Okay, because we will teach you the basic of programming and how to use the Python to write the code. Okay, and the second, the third and the fourth day is basically focus how to processing the data. Okay, for, it's not that difficult. Okay, the first thing is to understand the concept. Okay, the first thing is to understand some of the keywords, some of the uh, how to utilize the variables, how to use this library. Okay, that is the most important things. Okay, by the way, there is a standard flow after you build that algorithm. So, for example, if let's say you want to apply it in other specific cases, so you can use that algorithm again. Okay. So that doesn't necessary. We need to retype all those things from the beginning. So that's why, after you understand to build your own algorithm, then you just apply it for another case study. But of course, some of the keywords is not remember. Yeah, but if you train and train, of course, from day to day you will get familiar with it. Okay. So basically, you can if you want to learn the fundamental. Okay, we publish one book. Okay, in the Amazon. Okay. So it's already available in the Amazon and also you can directly purchase from me. <laughs> okay, so that is basically the things. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your answer. Another question that came in is whether a data scientist needs to have specific knowledge on each project. For example, if the data scientist is analyzing a farm, does he or she need to understand what the farmer has to do to better analyze and propose solutions. Excuse me, can you repeat again? Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. So, um, does a data scientist need to have specific knowledge on each project? For example, if the data scientist is analyzing a farm, uh, does the scientist need to understand what a farmer does to have a better analysis and to pro propose the solutions? Okay. So that's why in our program, we emphasize, okay, after you have obtained all these specific skills, okay, you are not exactly, we cannot call you as a data scientist unless you have a specific domain of knowledge. For example, in the farming itself, right? So if that guy have a good understanding, okay, what, so it helped a lot, okay, to under, for example, from the data, they can identify the irregularity of the data. They can analyze the problem. They can identify through that data itself. Okay, if let's say someone that from uh, other knowledge, background knowledge, then they try to understand in engineering, it may be difficult for them because they don't understand the concept of engineering. So that's why the things that we emphasize okay, during the training course is to induce the way of thinking, the way of analytic thinking, how to use uh, tools, okay, the technical tools, technical skills. And we try to make, uh, to open the mind of our trainer in every area of the, uh, of the situation. So that is the things that we suggest. Eh? So because the data scientist is a long journey, Okay, for example, when we involve in education, so most of our project is they are now we have three, okay, finance because we do some project 
is uh, uh, some marketing company and also finance company, banking. Okay, so we already familiar with the concept with all those things. And second, engineering is our main uh, topics. Like civil engineering. If mechanical, we may not really that understand. But for civil, yes, something that within our field. And the third one in education, yeah, the prediction model that I already told you. So we learned that through a kind of very long process. We need to have experience on that. So that is the domain of the knowledge. Yes, that's my response on that. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your answers. We'll need to move on shortly to the Internet of Things presentation by Wen Jin. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, yeah, so a couple of questions in regards to the courses. So we'll be having the course on CBSS hopefully in May. And it will be provided both online and in, hopefully in class if the movement restriction order will be ended by then. And uh, so the courses can be uh, conducted both publicly and in-house for the companies. So yeah, a reminder, if you have any specific questions, uh, you can always uh, send the questions to uh, info at itrain.com.mi. So, uh, now I will give the floor to Wen Jun, and uh, yeah, so we'll have a session on Internet of Things, and uh, after this, another Q and A session. So I give the floor to Wen Jun.